everyone, I'm Whitney and I post a new tutorial every single week to help sewers of all skill levels learn new projects and techniques. This week I'm sharing a really neat drawstring bag that has a contrasting strip in the middle of the front. I did mine in rainbow colors, but you can of course do yours in any fabrics that you like. You will need a neutral fabric for the bag and the lining as well as your six fabrics that you choose to uh, feature in the front of the bag. My rainbow colored pieces are all just basic quilting cotton and then my neutral is something a little bit heavier. I'm not exactly sure what kind of fabric it is, but I think maybe it is a natural muslin fabric, um, but it is a little heavier than the printed fabrics. Since the rainbow fabrics are thinner, I did want to go ahead and interface them. And the way that I did this was cut a strip of interfacing that was about five inches wide by the width that it comes. And then I trimmed it down to about uh, three and a quarter inches wide. And this gave me enough pieces to interface each of the colored sections. I fused one piece to each fabric, then trimmed the fabrics down to the needed size. I will have all of the measurements listed out in detail in the corresponding post on my website. The direct link is in the video description. Here are all the pieces we will be needing. Starting with the rainbow section, turn the first two pieces right sides together, lining up the top, bottom, and one side. You can add pens or clips if needed. Sew the long side to attach with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat this with each piece in order until all six are sewn together. Then press all of the seam allowances to one side. Time to sew the bag front together. Grab the front top piece and match it up with the rainbow strip so it is right sides together. You'll notice my rainbow strip is wider than the other piece, so I just centered it. And this is explained with the measurements that are over on my website as to why uh, one piece is larger than the other. Sew the two together with a quarter inch seam allowance. Open it up and press so the seam allowances are going toward the rainbow stripe so they won't show through the bag. At this point, trim up the edges so the rainbow matches the top. Add the bottom the same way as the top. Lay them right sides together, lining up the bottom and sides. Sew with a quarter inch seam allowance. Every seam of this bag will be sewn with a quarter inch seam. Press the seams again toward the rainbow strip. The front is now complete. Lay the back piece on so they are right sides together. Sew the side, bottom, and other side to attach. It should look like a very basic unlined bag at this point. We are going to box the corners to give the bag more dimension. Fold the corner of the bag down so it makes a point with the side seam and bottom seam leading to it. Check to make sure the seam allowances are going in opposite directions so that they sort of nest together. Place a ruler on the corner and mark where it is three and a quarter inches wide. Add some pens or clips and sew directly on the marked line. Repeat for the other corner. Some people trim the corners out after they're sewn, but I usually leave them in because they help the bottom hold its shape a little better. Now onto the lining. Lay the two pieces right sides together and sew the side, bottom, and other side, but leave a four inch opening in the middle of one side for turning the bag through later. You should have the opening in the side as well as the entire top open. Box both corners the same way as before. Time to work on the casing. Take all four pieces and place them right sides together in sets of two. Sew each short side to attach. Flip each piece right sides out. Sorry that they kind of blend into my pressing surface. They are all actually the same material. Press each short end so they lay nice and flat.
Then fold each piece in half, lining up the long edges and press so they have a nice fold line down the center. Turn the outside of the bag right sides out and smooth it out flat. Lay one casing piece on one side so the raw edges are lined up with the top edge of the bag. Center it between the side seams. I just eyed mine, but feel free to use a ruler if you like. Clip it into place. Flip the bag over and repeat for the other side. So about 1 8 inch away from the top edge to attach. You can see how the casing will look if you flip it up. With the casing flipped down, put the outer bag inside the lining so they are right sides together. Match up the side seams and clip around the top edge to hold everything in place. Sew all the way around the top edge. Like with all the seams, remember to backstitch at the beginning and the ending. Reach in through the opening in the side and turn the entire bag right sides out. Take care to not accidentally rip any of the seams while working it out. Tuck in the edges of the opening toward the inside and top stitch to close. Push the lining into the bag, making sure the corners are nicely in place. Then I like to add a top stitch around the top, just below the casing. Smooth the fabric away from the casing as you sew and it gives the bag a nice polished top edge. Time to pick something for the drawstring. I usually use a 5 8 inch ribbon for my sash, but didn't have one I liked with this bag. Instead, I used a piece of cording I already had. I believe it is normally used for making piping or for rag rugs. I attached a safety pin to the end and fed it in one side of the casing and all the way around until I came out next to where I started. This was a little difficult to do because the ends of the cord unravel very easily and don't want to hold the safety pin in. Then trim off the excess, allowing enough extra length to form the knot and tie the ends together. Flip the bag around and repeat, inserting a drawstring in the other side and feeding it around, then tying the ends together in a knot. The bag turned out so beautiful and I love it. My youngest daughter has already tried to claim it for her own, but the cording is a little harder to pull to tighten the bag than ribbon is, so I'm probably going to make another bag similar to this for her so that it's easy for her to open and close. I have really been enjoying making a lot of different zipper bags and drawstring bags. They've been so helpful for organizing our new house and everything. And if there's any kind of bags that you want to see tutorials for here on Whitney Sews, make sure to leave a comment down below so that I know what you all are wanting tutorials on so that I can create content that actually helps you out and helps you make things that you will love and use. I have several drawstring bag tutorials already here on my channel and I'll have a playlist full of them linked right over here to the side and also click my picture right down there to subscribe so you don't miss out on my upcoming sewing tutorials. Until next time, happy sewing.